welcome once again to American Hots. I'm your host, Santa. This week we find ourselves at one of the busiest corners in the world, 34th and 5th in New York City. Home, of course, to the Empire State Building, but also to one of the six New York City locations of Heartland Brewery. Before we go inside and taste some great brews, let's head out to the brewery in Greenpoint and see where this great beer all begins. We're here now with Heartland Brewery brewmaster Kelly Taylor. Tell us a little bit about where we are. Well, right now we're in the uh, grain storage uh, area for the brewery. This is where we keep all the dried grain right before it goes into the mill, sent off to the uh, to the mash tun. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we've got bags of grain here. Uh, you typically, you just open them up, look inside. This is all Pilsner malt. This is the base for most of our beers. Okay. All right, it's nice, uh, full kernel. This, this particular malt comes from England. Uh, a lot of our malt comes from uh, England or uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or um, we even get some malt from Germany. So what kind of beers might you make with this kind of grain? Uh, well, this grain is the base for most of our beers. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what's going to give the beers fermentable sugars and its base body. And then anytime we want to add uh, caramelized malts or roasted malts or something, we can get uh, add those to make uh, red ales or stouts. Or in the case today, we use some, some chocolate malts to make the buffalo bock. Okay, cool. All right. How much does one of these weigh? Uh, this is 55 pounds. Ooh, so you can yeah. do a little work. Yeah, and we, we have to throw uh, about uh, 100 of these. A day? Yeah. So. Do you do that? Uh, I used to. Now, I got people <laughs> yeah, doing it for me. Yeah, now you're somebody doing it for you. I like yeah. that. I have to think a lot more, so. <laughs> All right, if you like, I can show you where the grain goes next in the process. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right, great. So now, this is, of course, where you hang the catch of the day, right? Uh, clearly. Yeah, so that's <laughs> where we hang the brewers that misbehave. <laughs> All right, so this is the mash tun. This okay. is, we took the grain from up top, where we saw earlier, ran it through the mill, comes up, drops into here, mixes with water. We use about a ton of grain and about 600 gallons of water, mix that up in here, let that sit for an hour and a half. Wow. At, at that point, you got a nice viscous sugary liquid. You open a valve on the bottom, the liquid comes out, leaves the grain behind. Mm -hmm. We take the grain out, put it in these dumpsters, put it out on the street, and a pig farmer from New Jersey comes in and picks it up three days a week. Oh, I like that. That's very yeah. kind of green, reusing it. Sure, yeah. Well, we, you know, we, we brew five days a week two, at a ton of grain per brew. Mm -hmm. We're doing about 10,000 pounds of grain a week. We'd be up to our ears in grain, and I'm, yeah. I'm really happy the pigs like it. <laughs> you know. All right, so what does this look like when it's done here? Well, if you can go ahead and pull some out, right. this is uh, this is the finished product. It looks like a big, looks like a lot of oatmeal or grape nuts, yeah. really. Oh, I love it. And, and it's edible. Is it? Yeah. Well, just like I said, you can feed it. That's true. I guess the pigs eat it. Feed it to the pig. Well, pigs will eat anything, but it just tastes like grape nuts. It tastes like hot grape nuts. <laughs> I little... still like beer better though. I gotta <laughs> yeah. say. Am I hired? Uh, you're going to take a few more weeks of training, but I, I think you're uh, on the right track. I'll tell you what, the guys who do this, you guys must have great arms. Because that's it's, not It's easy. all on the shoulders. It's all on the shoulders. So this is at where the, uh, great, the sugary liquid goes after it comes out of the mash tun. Okay. Get it into here, bring it up to a boil, and this is where we add the hops through this uh, okay. manway on the top. Boil it up for an hour, add some more hops, boil it a little bit more. And then we cool it down and put it into the fermenters, put yeast in there. Careful, it's hot. I was going to say, how hot is it in there? Because I boiling. noticed it's steam. Okay, it's yeah. sucking air yeah, it's in. It's a thousand gallons of boiling liquid. So nobody jumps in there? Nobody jumps in there. No, not right now. You can jump in this one yeah. if you like, but uh, I don't recommend that either. So it's level one punishment is the hook, and then level two punishment is a swim. Well, this is the final level of punishment <laughs> in here. So this is like level six. There's this several is like, levels Yeah, this is exactly right. It's very like philosophical. That. That's cool. So how much beer do you guys put out here a month? Uh, in a month, we put out about uh, 1,200 kegs of beer. Wow, and that's to provide yeah. to all of your New York locations. Yeah, exactly. There's six Heartland locations in the city, and uh, they go through quite a bit of beer. Yeah. And we ship it to them directly from the brewery, so it doesn't have to go through a middleman, doesn't have to right. go through a loading dock anywhere. It goes from our cold room onto a truck right into their cold room. And we're right here in Brooklyn, so it's a short trip to Manhattan, so yeah. it's literally, it's very fresh it's every day. It's very fresh, yeah. Brewery fresh. Yes. Uh, this is the fermenter, so after okay. the beer has been boiled up and we cool it down, put some yeast in it, and put it in the fermenter. The yeast starts uh, consuming all the sugar that we created from the grain early on. Consumes all that sugar, creates CO2 and alcohol. The CO2 bubbles off, the alcohol stays in the beer. Then once the beer is done fermenting, the 
It takes about a week for an ale, about two weeks for a lager. We let it sit and let the flavors kind of blend and mature. So what we have in here is uh, finished fermentation, but it has not been filtered or carbonated yet. Okay. So you know, you're gonna notice it's gonna be, go ahead and pull a sample off there. Okay, now I have been told this is the best place to get a beer, is that true? Uh, this, straight out of the tank. Right, yeah, it's, you can't get any fresher than that. Straight out of the tank like that. This hasn't even been processed through any machinery, no filters, no kegging. It's right off the tank. It's a little flat. But the taste is there. But it's nice, bright flavors. Yeah. Really interesting. It's really good. Yeah. Mmm. It's like fresh squeezed orange juice. <laughs> it's fresh squeezed barley juice. <laughs> okay, now this is our uh, biggest fermenter. This is a 90 barrel fermenter. It's a 3,000 gallon tank. Holds about 180 kegs worth of beer. So as you would imagine, that's where we put our biggest selling beer. What is the biggest selling Heartland beer? Uh, that's the Cornhusker Lager. Uh, what's going on here in the bubbling tank? The bubbling tank, that's a, an <laughs> airlock basically that's letting the CO2 out of the tank as it's fermenting. So every okay. bubble you see there is an extra gram of alcohol being created. Oh wow. So as it's bubbling along, it's alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. So every time a bubble bursts, a uh, beer gets its wings? <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so where are we at right now? Okay, so now we're in the keg room. This is where all the beer goes um, after it's packaged and it's just in holding here before we put it on the truck to go to Heartland. Okay. Yeah. And then about how many kegs are in here right now? Right now we have about 350 kegs in here, uh, but we can get about 500 wow. in here on any given day, which is about 250 barrels worth of beer. With the size of the, you know, the brew tanks and the fermenters that you have, how much, what's the capacity of, of this brewery? The help? overall capacity, uh, we could do about 20,000 kegs of beer a year. Okay. Yeah, and right now we're doing um, about 11,000. Okay. So, so we're about 50% of our total capacity. Got we, room to expand. Yeah, we have 11 different fermenters, and uh, so we could have 11 different beers going at, at any given time. Uh, four of those fermenters are double size, so any given time we can, any given week we could brew 14, 15 times. We brew usually one beer a day, a different mm -hmm. beer every day, and uh, some days we double up and do two brews. And, uh, so a lot of times it'll be the same beer twice in the one of the tanks. Okay. But uh, we're doing about seven brews a week right now. Now, with the level that you're at, with how much beer you're putting out, how do you keep consistent? Because I know you're not computerized here, right? That's right. It's all uh, very, we, we have pumps that move the liquid around, but the rest of it is uh, a lot of eyeballing it, a lot of uh, taking measurements, and manually tasting, smelling, getting air, getting dirty. Yeah. And, and so we have a, a set level of consistency, though. Uh, I think we have more variance than um, other people would have if they're putting it in the bottles or if they're trying to put it out into the mass market. We're just going right to the restaurants and people that come into Heartland Brewery don't mind so much if the beer varies a little bit from one batch to the next because it's kind of, it's a craft. It's a right. craft brewery and they want it to taste as fresh as possible, which means we don't really adulterate it here. We do the best that we can. We get fresh materials, fresh raw materials, quality ingredients and, and uh, good, good, good people moving the stuff around. So. Yeah. I like that hands-on feel. There's a very yeah. personal feel to the entire brewery. At the end of the day, you can sit down, have a pint of beer, go into one of the Heartlands and see 500 other people having one of your beers and go, right. nice. I did that. <laughs> yeah, feels I like good. that. Okay, so now what do we have over here on the shelves? Okay, now this is our, our soda flavorings and our beer flavorings area. So Heartland also does craft sodas. That's right. We have a uh, root beer, a diet root beer uh, flavored with Splenda. Uh, black cherry, an orange cream, and a homemade ginger, uh, Jamaican ginger beer. Oh, wow. That's yeah, amazing. so it's really spicy and lemony. It's really good. So. so is this where also the beer gets its flavors? Well, we do have some beers. Uh, one of them is the Indian River Light, the spice with orange and coriander. So we have some orange oils, um, which actually I have here, which is a, an extract of an orange rind. Okay. It's basically just compressed orange rind in an oil form. Uh, and then for the winter time, uh, we have the nutmeg and the cloves that we use in some of our holiday spice beers. That's awesome. Before heading to Heartland's Beer Hall, owner John Bluestein stopped by to tell us about Heartland's beginnings. I thought I was getting into uh, the pizza business with a little bit of manufacturing in the back room. And I really didn't know any better. I didn't know I was running restaurants and having production facilities and having customer service. I thought it was just like a little retail store. And uh, I found out very quickly when the beer consumption and the sales volume went like that, I had something uh, beyond what I expected. John isn't the only owner. Employees are owners as well. It's uh, almost 50% owned by the employees. We did the uh, ESOP plan about two years ago. It's much bigger motivation to the, to the managers and it's great as a, a recruiting tool. And uh, 
the more senior people have a real sense of ownership. I think. Initially, Heartland brewed at three separate locations. As the business grew, it was key to consolidate the brewing operations. It became, you know, just too much of a burden in terms of the paying those high retail rents for manufacturing space, having different brewers and different restaurants, having product consistently, consolidating out here and having all our brewers work out of one facility gives us a lot more quality control, uh, a lot longer conditioning times. Uh, with all these tanks, we can serve a much greater variety of beer. It was time to leave the brewery and see where this great beer is served. When we try to create a Heartland experience when we design a restaurant. And experience means accessibility and comfort and fun because brewing beer and drinking beer is about fun. So we have fun with the labels, the Bruriana, with our own advertisements, with the way we design it. We try to make it feel clean but lived in, like a comfortable old shoe. You know, it's perfect. a place where you, you sort of sit down and you feel you've been there before or you don't want to leave. And a lot goes into that from the lighting to the artifacting to the flow. And we're in the Empire State Building, which is terrific because there are all kinds of interesting things design wise in here. Like part of the, it's called the Serpent, Serpentine Stairwell. It's been there since the building opened. And that's the original terrazzo down there. And so we managed to maintain some of that and put some wood in. We like a, a real eclectic look. And it's beautiful. It then, absolutely lends a really unique air to the entire mm. place. Let me show you the largest beer hall on the East Coast. Absolutely. John has transformed a cavernous space within a world-famous landmark into one of the largest beer halls in the world. Despite the size, unique touches throughout the hall make it a cozy, familiar celebration of beer. And so we've tried to mix some of the old with the new. Some of them are are uh, reproductions and there's a lot of original in here and you know it's, it's part of what brings comfort to it. Um, we have a lot of beer labels downstairs up on the walls that are pre-prohibition and have great images on them and we commissioned some work also. So we have one of the biggest Bruriana collections in the New York Tri-State area for sure. What the Bruriana does it infuses a sense of culture and beer history in any location particularly a brand new location. Who wants to drink in a brand new place? You need you know, a sense of being lived in and worn in and a sense of character. And a lot of the, the beer trays you see and a lot of the old back bar sculptures bring that, bring that up. And when I go to shop for these things, you know, I look for things that have a little bit of wear and tear on them. And guys, people don't know why I'm buying that stuff because it's not as valuable. Well, it looks better in the restaurant. One thing that the designers really strive for is we're in a city, so it has to be an urban design, but have sort of a countrified or, uh, you know, blended feel, really. I think they succeeded. So, John, the bar really continues the feel of the brew pub. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, it's very important in the design of a brew pub, in my opinion. The bar has to be part of the restaurant, not separated, not an entirely different area, not behind a drink rail. It has to scream out, drink beer. The other part is the homemade beer, the craft brew, has to be a part of the culture. It has to be seen. It has to be, you know, a part of what our talk to customers. We use beer talk when right. we talk to guests. And here are beers right on the draft tower. You can see the imagery here. You can see it back there. It's literally on the menu over here. And so, and of course on the name. So it's important to communicate that. Of course, tradition will only get you so far. It was time to find out if Heartland's brews are up to the test. Amy, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good, Anna. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So we're going to do a little bit of a beer tour, right? Okay, yeah. This is called a Voyage of Beer here okay. at Heartland Brewery. So the way you, you could drink this if you wanted to, we start, we recommend, that you start with number one, and you would go all the way around to number five, and then into the middle, and that way you're drinking them lightest to heaviest, oh, okay. or lightest to darkest. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, so what do we start with? You're going to start with number one, okay. and that's called our Indian River Light. It's our lightest beer here at Heartland. Okay. You can probably smell orange in that. I can, and I remember this morning Kelly was telling us a little bit about the process. That's that one, and it also has a little bit of coriander in it. It's so good. And it's I very it, light. It is. It's definitely what I recommend to our lighter beer drinker here who isn't a beer drinker. It's something that I think everybody can like because yeah. it's so light. Yeah, absolutely. And you can really taste the orange. A lot of beers will say, you know, there's hints of or tones of. This one, you really can taste it. That's awesome. And that's also an ale. So that means it's going to linger more in your mouth at the same time. So that orange doesn't bite right off. You should be tasting it for a while. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So this is number two. This is our corn husker lager. 
my favorite. It's probably one of our most popular ones. It's very basic. It's made with sweet corn flakes, and like I said, it's a lager. So that one, unlike the Indian River, is gonna bite right off your tongue. So it's more refreshing, more crisp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely taste a difference from here to here. Yeah. This one just right away. But it's not too strong. It's just one step up from that. Yeah, absolutely. Good. And then number three, you had noticed before, with our lemon in it. I know I'm gonna like this one already because it's got a lemon in it and that makes there me think go. it's a wheat beer. If you want, you can squeeze it in there. Yeah. That's what Kelly would probably recommend. It brings out even more of the citrus tones. But this is called our Harvest Wheat and it's a German beer. It's a Hefeweizen. Um, and it's unfiltered. I don't know if you can see this, but the difference between the Cornhusker Lager and the Harvest oh, yeah. Wheat, see how cloudy that one is? Much milkier. Yeah, it's because Kelly didn't filter that. So it's an unfiltered beer. And we serve it with the lemon to bring out more of the citrus. That's so good. You like that one? I always love a wheat beer. It's always my favorite. And we have a really good one. And actually with that, a few beers we can do combinations with, and this has a really good one. It's called the Raspberry Blonde, where they put a shot of raspberry chambord in that. Oh. It is so good. It's <laughs> so good. Okay, so th this one is number four. It is. This is called our Indiana Pale Ale. It's in the Pale Ale family, so it's going to be lots of hops, mm -hmm. lots of mods. We recommend that it's for an aggressive beer drinker. That's me. I'm aggressive. I love that. I love a really hoppy beer. It really kind of gets you. And this one also has the companion that 500, you saw that earlier. Oh, yes. The yes. And that would be just like this, except it's poured through a nitrous tap, so it comes out even stronger and creamier. And Kelly double dry hopped it, so that means at the end of the beer process, he threw in extra hops, so wow. it's loaded. <laughs> wow. Loaded. So now, how did you get to know so much about beer? Well. Honestly, you just, when you set up this voyage, it teaches you so much because you can see it, but there's so many ways they've taught us here. Kelly or another brewmaster will come in and go over it with us once or twice a week. We ask them many questions. And then we were required to take a class called Beer 101 when we became a server here. And it's kind of like what we're doing right now, where we get a voyage in front of us, we look at the color, Kelly has to smell it, he has to taste it, and we do what we call beer talk where you find out, you know, what goes best with what food, what, you know, you would recommend if somebody likes champagne, we would recommend the Harvest Wheat, you right. know, and I never would have known that without Beer 101. Right. And then you graduate to Beer 102, where you actually go out to the brewery, like you guys did, and you right. get to see how everything is made and have a tour of it. Oh, wow. And the best thing is that that's available to, you know, customers here. So this is the Red Rooster Ale, okay. one of our well-balanced beers here. It's like a Sam Adams or Bass, if you wanted to compare it to something. Okay. It's got caramel and toffee and nuts. Wow. It's very rich without having a really heavy flavor. That's true. And you know what? That's really good because it goes with a lot of food items. Because yeah. it's so well-balanced, you could do it with a lighter dish or a heavier dish. Yeah, absolutely. So. And then we're in the middle, so we're already there. All right. That is our award-winning beer. It's ah. named after John Bluestein. It's the Farmer John's Oatmeal Stout. Yes. Now that's just so good. You like I that? love a stout, but this is absolutely one of the best that I've had. It's so good. Ours has a, typically a little bit more ingredient to it than your regular Guinness, and a little stronger on the alcohol content as well. Yeah. But really, really good. We get so many compliments on that beer. Yeah, it's delicious. I, I could drink a lot of these. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> and plus, that one sometimes we call it a dessert beer because that stout yeah. goes great with like ice cream or chocolate cake. Absolutely. You could have it after a meal, finish off with a stout. Amy, thank you so much for everything. You know so much about the beers here, and the beer voyage was fantastic. I'm glad you liked it. Thanks. John, now who's this guy on your glass? Oh, that's a good story. I named all the beers months before I opened the restaurants because I didn't know how to run a restaurant. I didn't know what else to do, but I knew I could name the beers. So this is Farmer John's Oatmeal Stout. It was my stout, and just by the luck of the draw, it won three medals in the Great American Beer Festival. And so it's me with coveralls and a little bit more hair, and uh, fortunately, it's still a great beer. Well, it's a great beer, a great location, amazing food. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for coming. Cheers.